Amen. Okay, great. So, we are somewhere in the Bible. Where are we at? Romans 5. <laughs> Romans 5. We're actually at the end of Romans 5. I, I mean, did we get through this one a little faster? Did it seem that way? Or, what's that? A little bit faster. A little bit faster? Okay. Are we speeding up here? What's going on? So, anyway, I didn't think we were. Um, so, any uh, comments? Can we, did, did, did we, does anybody remember what we talked about last week? We were talking about death entered by sin. Yes. Okay. And you were also speaking of the... Uh, death entered by sin. Yeah. And also you were speaking of the uh, separation. Uh, death was a, a spiritual, not only but a, phys a physical separation, but also... Yes, the spiritual. Right. Yeah. The uh, word. The word death it means it means separation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanatos. Yeah. Th thanatos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it means separation. Doesn't mean annihilation. Yeah. So, well, what were the three types of death that we talked about? Oh, the physical death. Uh, yes. The physical, the spiritual death, and, and eternal and death. eternal death, eternal death. So. Why did Jesus come? What was the purpose? Because men, because well, we because because if we write on here, we can say that <clears throat> um, that let's see, let, let's let's read some. Let, let's just read a little bit here first. Okay, so um, let's start at verse twelve. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all sinned. And we said that that word pass is di, di erkomai. So in other words, there was one man. If I can draw it there, if anybody can see it. And that one man was Adam. And Adam, he sinned, right? Um, and because he sinned, that one sin passed throughout to his son, to his son. I'm, I'm going to draw, you know. A family? Yep. To his son. And then it passed, passed to him, passed to him, and it passed. These are billions and billions of people, right? It passed throughout the entire human race. Sin. Because of one man. It's like, <clears throat> that. that's just very interesting, isn't it? That's where it was generated at. Because of one man. Because of one man, Adam. So, so you have the human race here. You have Adam. And we're just going to say that this circle is Adam. And everyone who's been born in the world, here's a person. Here's a person. And there are, everyone in the world is, before they get saved, they're in Adam. They're in Adam. And then, and because of this, all men, the, 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 the penalty is death. But then Christ came, the, and we, in 1 Corinthians 15, talks about the last Adam. And in the last Adam, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, if any man is in Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. There is no condemnation. So the condemnation was death. That was the condemnation, right? The condemnation, the penalty was death. But in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And we have passed from death unto life. Does this help? Yeah. That if any man, we pass from death unto life, and now we are in Christ and no longer in Adam. That's pretty amazing to think about that. Does this help? This is so... 
Let's see. Let's see if we can go to a new one here. With Pastor Chris's <coughs> instructions here. <coughs> we can... <laughs> How do we find a new one here? Let's see. The dot, dot, dot. The dot, 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 dot. Um, let's see. Oh, there okay. you go. Now try the dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, try the before. other one on the other side. There you go. There. I don't know. I just saw it when it showed up. Yeah, I think it was on this side. I'll scroll up. It looks like. Sorry, folks. I'm learning this here for the very first time. Whoops. Okay. So here's the dots. I should have got this before. Should this before we were out of class here. Um, Here. Um, right there. There it is. There it is. How'd you do that? Down here, there's a little thing that says create a new note. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I got a fresh note back. Okay, so um, verse 13 it says, For until the, the law, sin was in the world, and sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even those who had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him who was to come. The word is tupos. In other words, who is the one, what, who is this talking about here? The one who is to come. Christ. Christ, yes. I think that's pretty much what goes without controversy there, right? But it says, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. What did we say the Greek word was for free gift? Charisma. Charisma, right? And we and we said that the word charisma. We'll write it in plain English. Charisma. What word do you see in there? Charis. Charis, which is the grace. word for for grace, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have ma. The, 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 it means the, the results of. Ma means <coughs> the results of. So what's the results of grace? The free gift, the results of grace. And what is the free gift? Eternal life. Life. Yeah, salvation. We have eternal life. There was death, but now we have life. And when do we get the life? We get it now. We have it now. It's our present possession. Yeah, the moment you accept Christ. And if you're born again, yes, you have to accept Christ first. And if you're born again, you have the gift of eternal life. Yes, praise God. And we that gift comes with what? God gives the Holy Spirit. To the believer. So the, the the spirit is the giver of life. Because we know in the book of Genesis it says that the spirit of God hovered over the waters like the earth was without form and void. And then it says the spirit of God hovered over the waters like there was no life on the earth. It was just dead. But the spirit of God came and created life on the earth. And, and, and God breathed into Adam the, the, the breath of life and he became a living soul it says and so now then because but now we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and we've been given eternal life not only so that means we will live forever a physical life we will have a new body it says in 1 Corinthians 15 we'll get a new body um, and we are no longer separated from God because that's what death means separation like when Adam and Eve they were, they were driven out of the garden of Eve because they had to be separated from God because of sin. And if you read, you read the book, the Old Testament, it almost seems like that God is angry with sin. And they had to follow all of these ordinances and things and all these statutes and all these standards and things like that. And if they didn't follow them, there was, there were, you know, like if, there, if your children were disobedient, then if you, your children were um, disobedient, you were supposed to stone them to death. 
I mean, that's like, whoa. It's like, really? Your own children? Like, this was the law. This is what the law brought. Um, it brought death. But Jesus came and saved us and took, took away the penalty of sin and took away the law. The law that brought death and condemnation for us. Because nobody could ever follow the standards of the law. It was not possible. Um, let's read on. Let's, what does it say? It says, but not as the offense, so also as a free gift. So, for if through the offense of the one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. But not as it was by the one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Katakrima. Right? The word condemnation. Does anybody remember what that was? Katakrima. How'd you know? <laughs> Katakrima. <clears throat> yep, the results of judgment. Because this means to judge down. This word means now, I just like words. This word means to judge. To judge down, and you have the word ma on the end. The results of judgment. Which is condemnation. But what about if you're in Christ? Is there condemnation if you are in Christ? No. No. Romans 8, 1. No Romans 8 1. No condemnation. And that B part there, it says in the King James, it says for those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, is actually it was a mistake that was written in the in the Greek. Because if you look at the older manuscripts and you don't have another King James version, it doesn't say that B part in there. Because, the, because in verse 4, it says, talks about walking in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit, and we enjoy this eternal life that we have by walking in the Spirit. See, we have the Spirit, but if we walk in the Spirit, then we get to enjoy the eternal life that God has. But I can walk in the flesh, though, and still, like, live in death, so to say. You know what I mean? It's like the old man, the old sin nature. But we can, we can enjoy this life that God has given to us. Um... It says, let's see here, where are we at? Verse 17, but if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, they, they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the offense of the one, judgment came upon all men unto condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. See, it's very clear here in the Bible, right? Is you're either in Adam or you're in Christ. So the Bible, that's why, that's why it's not by works of righteousness that we have done. That's why it's not by being a good person that we go to heaven. Because it's the free gift. If you have received the gift of eternal life, you are in Christ. And there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's the answer. That's the answer. But there's a lot of, especially there, there's, a, there's a, a lot of Christianity today that believes that, well, yeah, you accept Jesus as your Savior, but you have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have still have to do something. You still have to walk. You, you still have to follow God's commandments. And what is this? That's not, that's not what my Bible says. Not by following the commandments. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but by His mercy He saved us. Titus 3.5. Romans 4, 5, but to him who works not, but believes, his faith is counted for righteousness. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty, it's very clear in the Bible. So this is why we believe in eternal security. This is, we both believe, that's why by grace, and we, and we believe it's a total work of God. Salvation is a complete work of God. All that we did, all that you did, and what I did, is that we believed in what God has done for us. We believed what God has done for us. We believe that Jesus died for us, paid the penalty of our sins, and we go to heaven now because of the gift of grace. And it says here, um, <clears throat> verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so as by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered. This is verse 20. Let's go back here. Let's see. 
right. We're learning here. Okay, so the law entered. We went over this, didn't we? Does anybody remember the word? It's part of it. It's more than it's, it's more than just circle my. Oh yeah. Part of it. Yeah. No. No. The law entered Romans five twenty. The law entered. The word is peri, part. Peri erkomai. Par, yeah, par ice erkomai. Par ice. Par ice erkomai. Let's see. I mean, I wrote it down in here so that we could get it correct. There we go. There we go. Let's write it down. Now, does that blow your mind? That word? Divide it this way. What's par? Alongside? It's from para, right? Alongside? The word ice? What's ice? Into. Yep. Into? And what's Urkomai? Enter. Yeah. Well, it means it means to go or to come. Go or come. Depends on where you're standing at. It means go or come. It can, it can mean either way. Depends on if you're standing on this side or standing on this side. But when you were you, you have to interpret it by what's in the Greek. So it means. The word means par I circle my you guys write down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the law entered that the offense might abound. And we remember what the word offense is? That's that's the word for sin. Parapatoma. Para Patoma. And that means what? To fall alongside, right? Mm -hmm. To fall alongside. So, in other words, let's go back. Does everybody write that down? So you're kind of just going down the road and you're a pretty righteous guy or gal, right? And you're just kind of walking along. Of course, I wouldn't recommend walking on the highway like this guy is, but you're just kind of walking along and all of a sudden, whoops, kind of slip off, kind of like by accident almost, but not really. It's kind of on purpose because all sin is on purpose. But then you recover and you continue down the road. Like that. That's parapatoma. It means to slip. Like a, a slip up. Oh man, I messed up. That's what it means, a slip up. It's like, oh, but, but it was sin though. Like what is harm? What is the word for sin? Harmatia. What's that? Right. So have we ever done this before? Yeah. We did. Oh, that part. We're gonna we're gonna spell it out. <laughs> we're gonna spell it all out. So. <laughs> So you're a pretty good shot, you know, <laughs> but you, you, you know, like we go shooting sometimes and we kind of like, 
shoot here, kind of shoot there, shoot there. Oh, I've got one bullseye, shoot there. Yeah, it's pretty good shooting. Good grouping. It's pretty good shooting, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, might kind of like stay to the left sometimes for some reason. Like I shoot over here for some reason. But oh, that's beside sure. the point, you know. You're but pulling. what's that? You're pulling. Because right? you're pulling, like, yeah. Instead of squeezing. Or, or maybe, yeah. So you have to squeeze the trigger slowly and not be afraid of it to, you know, of the, the, the recoil. Yeah, the mm -hmm. recoil. So anyway, but it's pretty good shooting right there. Maybe from like, you know, 50 yards, something like that. But you know what? <laughs> it's not perfect, is it? No. no. It's not perfect. Like, to miss the mark. That's what sin means. To miss the mark. Well, it's like all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, right? All have sinned. Excuse my scribbling here. All have sinned and have fallen three, short. Three. What's that? Three. Three twenty-three. Oh, three. Six twenty-three is uh, none is righteous. The wages of sin. Is death. Yeah, the wages oh, okay. Of the sin. gift of God is eternal life. Okay, you're right. So it's three twenty-three. It's a good thing we got some good Bible students here today. All right. Yeah, so all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory. All have missed the mark. All have missed the mark. And so, so the law, the law entered. Let's go back again here. <coughs> Here's our sin. And then the law, here comes the law. It was, there was no law, Right? This was our sin. It wasn't so bad. It was parapatoma. Just kind of slip up. Then it was pharmatia. Missed the mark, right? But here comes the law. The law entered. Par ice erkomai. It means to come in alongside. To, to come in alongside. The law came in alongside of our sin, right here. In our sin, when we looked at the law, we would determine that, oh, this sin is maybe worse than what I thought it was. Maybe it's a little bit worse. And if we turn to Romans chapter 3, real quick, I'm sorry, Galatians 3. Galatians 3. You guys don't know what class is going to be like this today, is it? Galatians 3. Um, in verse 19. Galatians. Wherefore serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. So the seed should come and told to, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. So in other words, the word transgressions here. Did I not write this down? What is it? Parabasis. Yes. And this is this is much more serious. This is to transgress an, an established like an established like God's law. In other words, this made sin that it would appear sin. This made sin exceedingly sinful. This one, para parabasis, this is transgression. This is a much more serious word for sin. And this word right here, parabasis, um, it just, it means to transgress. What do you transgress? God's, God's ordinances. In other words, 
this made it appear that it would appear sin. That it would make it more, much more sinful than, than what it was. So then why? Why was it given? It was given by grace. It was given by grace. It was given by grace because if you don't know that you're a sinner, then you don't know that you need salvation. And there's a lot of people in the world that they don't, they don't think that they're sinners. They don't believe that they are. They think they're pretty good. I'm a pretty good person. I, 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 you know, I never shot anybody. I never killed anybody. I never cheated on my wife. I never, you know, it's like I didn't do these things. But wait a minute. Oh, did you have you ever lied before? Have you ever thought evil thoughts? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've sinned. And it's against God. And all sin is against God. And it's, it's just very interesting here. Um, if we turn to Leviticus, if you want to see what we are, who we are without Christ, the book of Leviticus here. This is, I was reading this, um, I think it's chapter 26. Okay, this is verse 14, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14. It says, But if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all of my commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, and if you your soul um, abhor my judgments, then you will not do all, and, and you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agu, and shall consume the eyes, and the sorrow of the heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when, when none pursues you. And you will not yet for all this hearken unto me. I will still punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, and your land shall not yield or increase. So we're getting the picture here. It's like, if we didn't have Christ, if we didn't preach Christ, this is what we'd be preaching. We'd be preaching this. This would be our message. If it wasn't Christ, we'd be like, you know what? If you sin, if you do these things, God is going to punish you. God is going to come against you. God is going to get you. And they, but, but see, Christ took our punishments for us. Everything. He, he bore all of our sins on the cross. And so now there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's just amazing, isn't it? Because there are churches today that do they preach this message? They do. Because if you read on, it talks about keeping the Sabbath. It talks about, you know, like, and if you don't, then, you know, God is going to, God is going to, yep, he's going to cut you off from his people and it's like you look at this stuff, and some people might even look at this and go, you know, I don't even like believe in God anymore because how how can it be so contradictory, you know, this part of the Bible and then the other part about grace that's in the Bible, you know? But 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 without Christ, if we didn't preach Christ and Him crucified, this would be our message. Complete opposite, a 180, wouldn't it? It'd be a complete 180. This would be our message. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because I was reading that. I was I was kind of troubled by it, to be honest with you. But I was like, well, that's the way it is without Christ. That's the way we are without Christ. And that's the way it would be. We would be condemned. Because why because why are is anybody condemned? Because they have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. That's the condemnation. That light has come into the world. 
that men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil and they didn't come to Christ. And so, um, and so if we if we read here um, that. It says, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And this word, much more abound, yep, it's Hooper. What is it, Pastor Chris? Parisio, right? <coughs> I'm not sure if I spelled it right. Upper parisio, whereas this word abounded here, the first word about it is just parisio. But this means to go above, to super abound it, to go above and beyond. Much more abound. Sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In other words, we have the scales. And we talked about that. So in other words, there was a scale, there was our sin, but God's grace was much greater than our sins. We have much more now. And that's why we preach grace. That's why we talk about it all the time. Because what, what we're seated above in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I mean, I'm not only just not condemned, but I'm seated above in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You mean I'm the head and not the tail? You mean that... that, that that Christ looks at us and looks at me as his own child and that there's no condemnation and he does, he remembers our sins no more. They're cast into the deepest sea and he loves us with an everlasting love. You mean that, you mean that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? Uh, you, you mean that, that I, I've been given all the, 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 the same inheritance that Christ has is what we have also? That we've been given all these things? I mean, it's like that's, we could talk about the manifold grace of God. The Bible talks about poikilos, many sided, many different facets of the grace of God that, that God has given to us. This is why grace much more abounds. This is why we talk about all this stuff all the time, because this is good stuff. This is what sets us free. And it sets us free from the power of sin. From the power of sin. Not his judgment. If we were to preach Leviticus 26, that wouldn't empower me. That would just condemn me. And I would just think there's no hope. Because that's what the law does. It brings in condemnation. Condemnation. Total, complete condemnation. But Christ, because the law was given by Moses, the grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's like, wow. It was given by Moses. The giver of the law. And then it says here, in verse 21, that as sin reigned unto death, even so, my great grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So death reigned. So this, and, but then grace reigned like a king, Basilio, right? Unto eternal life. And in verse 6, I'm sorry, chapter 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? This is what the people who don't believe in grace think that this is what we're teaching. That it's okay to sin. They say, well, it's okay to go on sin then if, if you teach those things and even think that it's from the devil because we're, we're, we're saying that, well, because they believe that if you continue in sin, that you're going to go to hell if you continue in it. Well, all people sin. Guess what? And where, and even, do all born again believers sin? Oh, yeah. I sin today. I'm not telling you what it is. It's like, they, all, of the, all, of, all of them do. Because, but where where do we draw the line where I, like, like, where does God draw the line where I've sinned enough now or I've sinned the big one? You know? It's like, here it comes, Ethel, the, 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 the big one, right? Or what did you say? No, what is it? Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm coming, it's the big one. You know, it's, it's, it's the big one, right? It's like, well, I sinned the big one this time. So it's like, well, you know, then God's going to cut you off. That's nowhere in the Bible. He paid for all of our sins. Every sin in full is paid for by Christ. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? We're going to continue to teach grace. So that sin won't abound, actually. Because Romans chapter 6 talks about how to overcome sin in our lives. So it, it, is, it is a complete salvation that God has saved us. Not only are we saved in the past from the, from the power of sin, or from the, the penalty of sin, but we are being saved from what? The power of sin. The power of sin. And how does that happen? How, how do you think that happens, that we get saved from the power of sin? Walking in the Spirit. Yes. Walking in the Spirit. Realizing the goodness of God. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. In Romans 2, 4. It's like, wow. It's the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That's how we overcome sin. We walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.16. So God has empowered us with power from on high to overcome sin. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. It says in the book, in the book, the book, the book of Revelation, the blood of the Lamb. I can't overcome sin without the blood of the Lamb. And without the word of their testimony, the preaching of grace, the teaching of grace. We, we teach the finished work, that Christ on the cross, that it is finished. So, you know, what, what does that mean? That, you're, that this is for real. This is real. This is the real true teaching, because that's what it talks about in John, in 1 John. Talk about that, that, like, how do you know that you're saved? Do you love your brother? Do you love God and love your brother? Do you keep his commandments? But his commandments are not grievous. Because the commandments are to love. And if you love him, then you'll keep his commandments. But how do I love him? Well, well, he first loved me. Well, how did he love me? He died for me. The blood of the lamb. It's like, like, like he died for me. He paid for the penalty of all my sins. And he said, we've been justified. We've been sanctified and we've been even glorified. Past tense. Even though we're not glorified yet, we will be. This is what grace does. Grace teaches us this. Grace teaches us these things. It says, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound? Let it not be. God forbid, it says here. But it says in the Greek, uh, let it not be. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How did we die to sin? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Oh, wait. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like dead dead. But what's dead? The old sin nature. It's not, it's not eradicated. So don't get me wrong. We still have the old sin nature. Every believer has the, still has the old sin nature. But, but I have been crucified with Christ. How did Christ, he, what, he didn't live to himself, did he? He wasn't about himself. What is the problem with people in the world? It's like, they're all about themselves. In the whole world. Is about themselves. It's like, but that, what does it bring? It brings in, you're never satisfied when you're about yourself. But what if you take your eyes off yourself and start putting it onto other people? It might change your whole viewpoint of life. And now you're not concerned about yourself, but you're concerned about other people. But if you love other people, what did Jesus say? That if you've done this unto the least of me, you've done it on, done unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Wow. But you mean the most, the, the, the worst person, like you, you're kind to them? He done it unto Jesus. Where did he say that at? I'll have to find it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was going to preach on that. And I, somehow I just, anyway. Yeah, it was it. But, but anyway, yeah, so you have to, that, 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 you, that, that the least of these that, that you've done it unto you, that you've done it unto me. It's like, wow. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is fulfilling of the law. And it's the true fulfilling of the law. This is the thing about it. So we don't teach that grace is a license to sin, that we get empowered to be able to overcome sin in our lives. Those churches that teach that, oh, it's about the law, it's about the law, I tell you, because they're so focused on the law all the time and thinking about sin all the time and focused on it, there's more judging going on. There's more people pointing fingers at one another going on. There's not unity. There's not love in the church. In those kinds of churches, because they're always like finding some fault with uh, with one another. They say, "Well, what if we love one another and not concerned about like what somebody did to me?" You know, Jesus was never like that. He never dwelt upon, "Oh, well, somebody did this to me or they did that to me." It's like no, like he would never thought about that. 
He didn't like dwell on the past. He, he just he loved people. He loved his own until the end. It's like we have the greatest example of all. The perfect man. Thank God there was one perfect. I mean, I thought Joseph might have been perfect, but then he married the um, the um, the Egyptian, right? Of course, I don't know if that was sin or not, but it was interesting because her father worshipped that he was the priest of um, what was it? Help me out. The priest of it was they worshipped the sun god Ra, and so it was kind of interesting. Like his daughter was, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just noticed little things like that. You know, like Joseph's, he married this Egyptian. I know I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I'm just saying that it's interesting because they worship the sun god, Ra. And there was actually two different kinds of sun god. There was a sun god, but it depends on what time of the day it was. There was a different kind of a god for the evening and a different kind of a god for the daytime. So I know that's why it takes me hours to study the Bible. Hours to find this out. You know, and it's like, uh, and so, but it's just, it's just interesting because there's so much to know. There's so much. Um, but, but yet Joseph died a physical death. So he had an old sin nature. There's the evidence right there. You know, and actually he was only like 110 years old. Did you notice that? I say only 110. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, yeah, but how long did Abraham live? Like 165, right? What about Methuselah? Maybe it was because, like, all the stress and pressure he was under. I don't know. You know, I have no idea. But, but anyway, where are we at? We're in Romans. Okay. So, he said, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Is that good? Should we stop right there? Or should we keep on going? You want to hear some more? It says, Know ye not, in verse 3, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. What does that mean, do you think? If we keep on going here, we can read it. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. In verse 5, for if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Because what becomes comes before resurrection? Death. death. Mm -hmm. You can't be resurrected unless you die. Mm -hmm. Not possible. We die to ourselves, and then we're resurrected. We walk in the newness of life. This baptism here, it just means to place into we even played the word as baptizo, and it just means to place into Christ. It doesn't mean water baptism. It just means we've been placed into Christ. Now, water baptism, though, however, is a public, um, yeah, it's a public confession or de 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 demonstration that now I'm not only have I been saved, but now I'm I'm a follower. I'm a disciple. Now, I'm following Jesus. Because do I have to be a disciple to go to heaven? Do I have to be a follower of Jesus? Do I have to love Jesus to go to heaven? No. You just have to accept the gift. That's all we believe. It's free, it's free. Free gift, you accept it. It's for all. But how much better it is if we fall in love with God and we follow Him. Then we get to walk in what? The newness of life. We get to experience the eternal life that God has given to us. Amazing. Isn't it? So it means that we've just been placed into Christ because the word bapt, baptizo comes from the word bapto, which means to dip or dip or immerse. Like in other words, like the the rich man who is in hell, he asked that Lazarus would go and dip his finger bapto into water and put it, you know, into his mouth. Right. So so he that was the word that was used. To dip. And it's translated to dip. There. So it just means that what? We've been placed into Christ. And because we've been placed into Christ and we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit do? What's the work of the Holy Spirit? Yes, he points to Christ. He points to Christ. It's so important to know that. 
It's not about the manifestation of gifts. Although we do believe in gifts. We believe in, we believe in spiritual gifts. But the evidence is not necessarily the manifestation of the gifts. It's the manifestation of love. Because if we've been given gifts, it's going to be done in love. Because it's ineffectual, the Bible says otherwise, without love. We're just a clinging symbol, a tinkering brass. We're ineffectual. If it's not love, there will be no rewards at the Bema Seat for them because they didn't come from God. So we're able to love each other with, with a pure heart fervently. We're able to love each other with, with um, a specific kind of way that the world doesn't know. The agape love of God. It's amazing, right? And our gifts, and, and everyone has how, at least how many gifts? At least one. That was a spiritual gift, at least one. So, amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's pray. So, Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for the word of God that never returns void. We thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for everyone who's watching online. We just want to give anyone an opportunity that if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, to accept him today. Accept this free gift that we're talking about. Jesus offers it to whosoever will take it. And if you realize that you need him, because all people do, you can accept him today as your Savior. Just say these words. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. But you died for me. You paid the penalty of all my sins. Save me. I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to be born again. If you've said that prayer, please give me a call at 727-452-7445. Love to encourage you in your new faith with Christ. I just encourage you in any questions you have. I don't know that I'll have the answer, but you know, I've, I've been studying the Bible for a while. So, um, Love to talk with you. So, amen? Amen. Okay, questions or comments? Or? Mm, yeah, uh, Pastor, in chapter 6, in verse 4, where it says, there, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up. Okay, so... I, when, you, when you read uh, these verses, I thought of uh, uh, John 17, verse uh, 12, where Jesus yeah. was praying for his disciples, and he said, to the, and he prayed, he said, that them who you have given me, mm -hmm. I have lost none except the son of perdition. Wow. Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's like, you know, this is Jesus doing this prayer, and then Jesus spent three years with Paul, and he must have been talking to him about the whole experience that he had with the disciples, because yeah. Paul was basically saying almost the same thing, I think, you know, when he was saying, you know, yeah, yeah. reading these, uh, writing these words. Right. You know? I think Paul got some kind of special, because he was with the risen Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it was different or not, because, I mean, Jesus obviously, he taught perfectly when he was, you know, on the earth. Yeah. But Paul was caught up to the third heaven yeah. and he yeah. was taught by Jesus. And that's why he's the twelfth disciple. I mean the twelfth apostle rather. Yeah. And um so but yeah that's really something. I think that he said that there was special knowledge given to him that no man that nobody yeah. knows. It's what I like and it's just I'm just yeah. thinking this. It just I'm just thinking this right now that uh you know Jesus did not start his ministry until he was 30 years old, and his ministry was for three years, because at the age of 33, yeah. he's supposed to he, he right. was crucified. And then Paul says that he was with Jesus, taught of him for three years. So I'm like, right now. you know, I mean, this is very interesting that, right. uh, you know, because Paul said, I, I was not, I didn't walk with Christ. I was not one of the 12 apostles. I didn't walk with them. Yeah. But he was taught for three years. The apostles, right. the disciples were with Christ for three years. Here is Paul being taught 
Or, and if Hermione wasn't yeah. sleeping like some of them did, yeah, Jesus said, went to go he pray, said right? He he labored harder. He labored yeah. harder. So, it's mm-hmm. like... That's a good point. Yeah. It's, it's like... That's a good uh, point. I'm surprised you know, said that. Wow. Yeah. That was, that was Jesus' grace towards Paul, who mm-hmm. was who was pers- persecuting the church. And, yeah. you know, he had a, a transformation, you know, an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And right. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, the men talk about nothing but grace. And I, I took a quick glance at uh, chapter 5 here, counting the times that he used to gift. The free gift. I mean, he yeah. said it. He said it probably about five or six times. Wanted to count it more, but yeah. I think that Paul was trying to <coughs> push the the um, not the, the 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 belief or the faith that you know by by using that word that many times, it would you know people will will get it. Well, you know, because sometimes we need to hear something ten times so that it can right. just you know. Well, it uh, seemed so like his disciples it. didn't get it. Like whenever he, like, none of them got it except for maybe John, when he talked about that he was going to go and be crucified on the cross. I think they decided, nah, not really. <laughs> but he, he wasn't lying though. But, but they're probably thinking, nah, that's not going to happen. Like Peter even said that, that's not going to happen to you. Surely, Lord, that won't happen to you. You know, it was like they was probably what they were thinking. You know, people tell you something, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, but. Uh, Think about who is telling you this. Yeah. No, you know, it's like he cannot lie. So, and he's not wrong. Yeah. So, he's, you know, so, but somehow they didn't get it, you know, until the the event happened. And then they remembered what he said. Yeah. And then, then they remembered. It came back to remembrance. But somehow, like, he would teach them. But he, and even though they didn't get it all, that they, 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 they got some of it, obviously, Peter didn't understand it even up until, like even until after G- that Jesus was resurrected, then something happened to him, and then he began to grow. I think that's when he started growing. You know, it's like I mean, yeah, he was growing before, but it was like, but then it was like, but then he turned into a mature Christian. It didn't seem like he ever was one. You know, if you read the Gospels, it's like even at the very end, like he's going back fishing again. Like after, it's like, well, it's, it's over. Go back fishing. Jesus came looking for him. It's like, you know, because he loved him. Like he knew how to build men. Jesus did. Like from nothing. You know, like a fisherman. Like who's that? You know, like nobody would ever heard of this this guy. What he fishes all day long. It's like, you know, in a boat. It's like, you know, it's like, who is he? Nothing would have ever been written about him. You know, but Jesus came and like he made him into this great apostle. Yeah. And he loved Jesus. Yeah. And it was because of love. It was because of love. That's why he even said, like at the end there in John 21, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? He goes, well, you know all things. I only, I only phileo you. I don't really love you like I said that I would. You know, I would, I would said I would die for you. Did he say that he loved him the most or loved him like well, he used two words. He used the word agape. He said, "Do yeah. you, do you?" He said, "Peter, do you agape me?" Uh, and Peter I, said, "Well, you know that I phileo you, which is a lesser word for love, right? It's not the love of God. It's the love of we love each other because we we share a mutual friendship. Which is nothing wrong with that. But the agape love of God is much higher than that because the agape love of God loves loves your enemies." It's like loves those who are, who don't love you. That's agape love. Yeah, and and and, it's like, and Jesus was using grace when he asked him three times, "Do you love me?" Because it's like he asked yeah. him three times. Peter denied him three times. Right. Three times Jesus asked him, "Do you exactly. agape love me?" In other words, I'm giving you grace for every denial. Yes. That you and that did. restored Peter. It empowered him because of the love of God. It empowered him to, to go forward now. They, they, you see this all through Jesus' teaching, though, the woman at the well. Like, he could have condemned her. It's like, well, you've been with five men. It's like, he could have like, talked to her like that. You've been like, the one that you're with now is not your husband. You need to go repent. You know, he could have said that to her. 
But no, there was something that he said to her that it caused, she knew that he didn't condemn her. And she became an instant evangelist and went and told other people. And they were like, well, let me go see for myself. That's what everybody should do. Go see it for themselves. You know, to see if this is real. I meant John. I meant John. Did he love John any differently than he did anybody else? I don't think he loved any differently. I think John's perception was that 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 I that he was a disciple whom Jesus loved. Yeah. But John was always getting right up there, right next to Jesus, laying his head on Jesus oh, he was Jesus' chest. Christian. Yeah, and that was part of the culture then to lay your head on the, the head of the party, whatever their chest, to get as close, you know, you, you had a seat of honor like that. And John and so John was the only one who was at the cross. Interesting. And the only one who didn't die a martyr's death. Where all the other ones did, and they all ran at the cross. It's like, what happened to them? Like, they saw the resurrected Lord. And they were commissioned in Matthew 28 said, go into the world. Start with Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. That was to those to those 12. Go into all the world. And so that's why we're here in Clearwater. We start here. We start with the apartments over there. Open care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so it's good. It's good stuff. You think about this. I mean, so what if we love one another like this? Is the yeah. spirit of God here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. It's like summonsing God. You know, like they summons God, like do 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 do. They do like they 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 they, they summons the spirits. Like we summons the Holy <laughs> Spirit the by loving one another. Because because faith works by love, and we love one another. So we love God and we love one another. We love the Bible. It says in Malachi 3.16 that he writes in the book of remembrance. And we set off and spoke about his name. It's like, well. So our ministry then, based upon that, should be about what? Should be about the Bible, yeah. number one. And it should be about the grace of God. Yeah. Not about Leviticus 26. I mean, could you imagine if I should I preach on that on Sunday? Why do we got books in your eyes? Can I preach on that one? Turn into a grace one? I don't know. I don't know if I could or not. That's why I love grace, yeah. Pastor. Yeah. That's why I love grace because, you know, here it says, uh, sh uh, shall we use, shall we, uh, let's see, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's why I love grace because the more grace I have been given, the more I hate the sins that, that I, you know, encounter. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, you learn to hate sin grace. because sin is very destructive. Yeah. And it separates you from fellowship from God. Just like that's what sin does. It causes death. It causes separation. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why it's against God. Yeah. But it causes, it hurts me. Because it, it separates me from fellowship with God. It doesn't separate us from our relationship with Him. Right, right. But it separates us from our fellowship with Him. And it's happened to my own mind and my own heart. And I do it to myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and like... Yeah, and then but God's there, but it's like but it, but I get deceived because of it. That's what the Bible says; it's deceptive. Yeah. So, and it's like, well, how does it deceive you? Well, you start it 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 it, 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 it disempowers you, is what it does. Right. Like, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil. What's that? Submitting. Well, it means walking in the Spirit, submitting to truth. You know, that's what it means to submit to God. And that's how you resist the devil. Because he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. In First Peter 5.10. So he's, you know, whosoever he will. And if he'll tempt Jesus to sin, you think he'll tempt you? Oh, yeah. Like, he's not afraid to, like, the Son of God. Like, he would try. You know, because he knew that would how he would defeat him. Because there was a promise that was made to the devil in Genesis 3.15. And it was about the seed of the woman that he was going to crush his head. Like he knows this, you know. So, but he wants to make God out to be a liar and disprove God. I always thought that that was a stupid question. What's that? 
that I could cause sin to abound. I mean, grace to abound. I mean, because oh, yeah. from God's point of view, His grace abounds. It's not my whether I sin a little bit or sin a lot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. affect yeah. it. It doesn't affect right. the quantity or the quality or of God's grace. So I mean, it's just like. <clears throat> When I read that question, it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like a man-centered mm. viewpoint. Yeah. Like I'm in control of what grace can be and what grace is and so forth. It just. So I should send more, so God gives me more grace. Yeah. Yeah, which is really like, ridiculous. Right. I have another. But thought. He gives more grace though to those that He resists the proud. It gives grace to the humble. So that's how we get the grace. It's like by being by humbling right. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the experience of the, right. The grace is the fullness of who he is. We don't really you know, yeah. it's not like God goes out I gotta really stoke up the grace here. And, and, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean if you re, if you look at Israel, like they sinned against him like over and over and over again and he just and God because of his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob he like he would not forsake them. Never. So is that like a picture of eternal security? Yeah. You think about like how wicked they were like they were like so against God but they, they were the children of God. Yeah. Or they were the children of Israel. Yeah. I had a thought about the law too. Um I have a biology degree, <clears throat> and if you take tissue samples, you have a biology degree, really. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, and um, and you put them under a microscope. Yeah. And you look at them under a microscope. <clears throat> you have a certain visual impact. So sometimes, if you stain it. Mm -hmm. What what was on the slide comes up in greater in greater vivid huh. detail. That's a good one, yeah. So I think that you, I'm oh, thinking about yeah. how the law is like a stain. It makes mm -hmm. it makes sin vivid. It makes it yeah. more yeah, it that's makes, good. Makes mm -hmm. it more uh, uh, perceptible. Yeah. And sometimes if you would look at tissue, you you would like there's nothing really there, and then you'd stain it. And put it back underneath the, uh, the microscope. And it reveals and everything there. Yeah. And you'd see like Green all kinds of mm. stuff. Mm. And there's like so a stain, it, stain the wood in there. And it brought out all of the yeah. things yeah. in the wood, you know. Yeah. So I, I was thinking that the, the, that the law is kind of like a divine stain. He mm -hmm. throws it in there so that... <laughs> It, be, it becomes really enhanced. Yeah, I think if you're honest with yourself, well, I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. uh, now what? My mouth is shut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. I zip mm -hmm. my lips mm -hmm. and I just accept Christ. Stop boasting about how good I am. Mm -hmm. Like filthy rags. Yeah, filthy rags. So, that's good, it's good stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. It's good. So sometimes we need that. We need the Holy Spirit to come in and say, "Hey, listen, you're you're, you're allowing all kinds of things in your life that shouldn't be there." And, uh, and so we we come before Him and take it from you, God. Yeah. You know, take it out of my life. Take it out of my heart. <clears throat> I was going to suggest to you too that um, Kenneth Lees. Oh, yeah. Translation of Romans 6 is really, really interesting. Okay. I mean, I'm using Kenneth Weiss as my study tools. I didn't read the translation, like the whole thing, but. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I read the translation, and it's like. Just recently? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. We'll get into it. We're going to get into Romans 6. Oh, uh, by the way, there is no Bible study next Thursday. You're out of town. Right? Yeah, we're out of town. So, no Bible study. Cat, you hear that? 
So I'm sorry to tell you. Um, Church service will still be going on. There's no Bible study. We'll resume again. Maybe next time. Oh. Who is this? Oh, Jay Vernon McGee. Okay. Nice. Do the Bible with Jay Vernon McGee. You know, I just, yeah. I don't compete myself, but I just yeah. watch your videos every week. Yeah. All right. Adios. See you, Pastor Chris. See you guys Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it. Me too. Yeah. See you on Sunday. We're in, we're in the studio. Went up a oh, good study. Yes. Good study. I yeah, trusted it. We didn't get there. Went we're a studio. Studio biblical. Studio biblical. Yes. Si, si. Muy, muy bueno. Gracias. Gracias. Yeah. yeah. Do you like it this way? Do you want it like this? I mean, try to do this from now on. You can go good. by the Greek especially when you write out the Greek stuff. Yeah, because if you just see a word and it's like, well, what did he say? It's like you never heard that word before. You know, par I sparkle my. It's like, what? You know? Yeah. Because the videos are the best, though. Video. Yeah, that is great. You can roll and roll and roll over and over again. Cause I got my hands full. Yeah. Buen estudio bíblico. Yeah. Buen estudio y buena conversación. Good study mm -hmm. and good conversation. Amen. Bien. 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 Muy bien. Sí. Muy bien. Muy bien. Gracias. So we're going to be gone to a couple of weekends in May. So we'll let you guys know. Oh. It'll be, um, we're only going to miss one Thursday Bible study, though, in May. But we'll miss, but there'll be two, and you and Pastor Chris will do it. So get ready. Yes, we'll just be studying for whatever. Yes, you know. Get ready for it. Must retire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Oh, uh, reading so through the Bible, I'm reading the Exodus right now. Yeah. You're reading Exodus at church? Well, I get, well you're going to be playing preaching on it. You're going to be preaching Who, on it on Sunday. Be? I am. Oh, okay. On Sunday, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Information yeah. about like uh, it's just some interesting things in there. Like uh, you, you can get it live if you have Facebook, right? Um, yeah. If you're if you're tuning our channel, you can get it at the same time. If you want to just watch it live, you can watch it live now. I don't have Facebook. Well, you can Facebook, so I can just get it. I have a hard time. You're not on Facebook? No. Oh, okay. I it since she was born. I oh, okay. But you. You get on YouTube though. I to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right? Is that right? Or you get onto the app. I get onto the you app, use the app which watch, goes to YouTube. To watch which goes to YouTube. Right. To watch okay. your services. Yeah. You know, watch, but mostly your study. You okay, study good, yeah. You studies. go back over it again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that helps big time. But, okay. But I wanted to watch a live church service. That's what I wanted to watch. Oh, okay. Well yeah, we're at ten thirty. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. You can do that through YouTube or Facebook. No, it can only it's only through Facebook okay. right now. So, but if you have a Facebook account or you know somebody that does, you can. What you do is get onto Greater Grace Church Clearwater, okay. look that up on Facebook, and you'll okay. find you'll find us on there. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I'll probably watch it. You know, when I'm working, I have to watch it. Cause oh, because you're working. Sleeping on oh. Saturday night, you know, sixteen hours. I work seven three p to seven a. I get off and I'll go to bed while you're doing your church service. Mm. So I'll get up okay. and go back to work the next day at three p. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Well, if you yeah, can watch it, that'd be good. That's true, but I still got choices. Yeah, right. I know I'm realizing that hard here, but yeah. Know, it's a big deal. Well, it's because you have a job. You know. Yeah. I mean, I get to support my family. Somebody's gotta work at night. Yep. <laughs> Maybe yeah. the oil burn. <laughs> as long as they mean. How do we do? Yeah. Pump 
couch. She's in bed. I sit down and I get up. Down. My hips are so stiff. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Is it like that all the time? Uh, do you work out? You wake up in there. I did work out today. I was supposed oh, to go for an hour and a half. Oh, do you go to the gym? No, no. At work. When I go and grab the carts from the 